Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how the IRR decision rule unfortunately has a drawback. Uh, recall what is the IRR decision rule? The IRR decision rule is that if you calculate the internal rate of return of a project and if it comes out to be greater than the discount rate, so here K is my symbol for discount rate, right? So K is discount rate. And so if you find that a project has an IRR or an actual rate of return that is greater than the discount rate or your opportunity cost, then it makes sense to accept the project. Well, it turns out that uh, this, this decision rule cannot be used under certain situations. Let me try and explain using a very simple example. So first, consider this situation. Uh, let's suppose that there is a project in which you will have to spend a hundred dollars today but then in one year's time you will get hundred and thirty dollars back and let's suppose uh, that your discount rate uh, is ten percent in other words the next best thing that you can do is get ten percent elsewhere if I ask you would you um, would you invest in this project based on the IRR rule you'll say well first let me find out what is the IRR of this project uh, you can you can probably see very simply that the IRR here is 30% because you're making a 30% return uh, but more specifically from a definitional standpoint we know that IRR is that discount rate that makes NPV equal to zero and so you will write down I mean if you want to do it the long way you'd say negative 100 plus 130 divided by 1 plus IRR, this is this needs to be equal to 0. In other words, I am discounting 130 by 1 plus IRR. The moment I'm putting IRR, then by definition, IRR is that discount rate that would make the NPV of this project equal to 0. Uh, if you solve this, you will find that the internal rate of return of this project is 30%. And so the IRR decision rule would say, look, 30% is more than 10% you should invest in this project and if you were so inclined as to calculate the NPV of this project at 10% then the NPV would come out to negative 100 plus 130 divided by 1.10 which if you'll do the math will give you about 18.18 dollars and so the NPV is coming out to be greater than zero as well. So the NPV rule would also say, yes, go ahead and invest in this project. So here, NPV is coming out to be greater than zero and the IRR is greater than the discount rate. So both NPV and IRR are telling you the same thing. And this is something that we've talked about. NPV and IRR are consistent with each other in the sense that both are telling you to accept this project vis-a-vis um, -vis NPV greater than zero and IRR being greater than the discount rate. Okay, that's that's all well and good. But now let's change this situation just a little bit. Let's suppose that you have an investment of this type where here at time period zero, uh, you are getting $100 and then in year one, you are making a payment or think about as a cash outflow that is happening at time period one. Of $130. Now if I ask you what is the IRR of this investment how would you compute this? You from a definitional standpoint you'd say well I am getting 100 and then I am going to be spending 130 divided by 1 plus IRR. I need to equate this equal to 0. If you'll do this math you will find that the IRR is coming out to 30% again. It's the same IRR. Same IRR is 30% here, even 30% here. Should you in, should you make uh, should you invest in this quote unquote project? If you were to use the IRR rule, the IRR rule would say the standard IRR rule would say yes, 30% is more than 10%. IRR is greater than discount rate. So you might say accept right uh, let me use a different color so you might say accept uh, but and I'm gonna leave I'm gonna put a question mark here why is that because if you actually went ahead and calculated the NPV of this project at 10% what's gonna happen you're gonna say okay 100 
minus 130, and then you're going to divide this by 1.10. That's actually the exact opposite of what we did here. I have a positive 100 here and negative 130 divided by 1.10. So actually, you're going to get negative 18.18, right? Basically, the negative is basically just this number. Well, that's, that's interesting because what's happening here is that NPV is coming out to less than zero, but the IRR is greater than the discount rate. And all of a sudden, uh, that consistency that we talk about, about how NPV and IRR are basically going to tell you the same thing, actually, that's not happening anymore. NPV is telling you to not undertake this investment or project because it's negative NPV, but the standard IRR rule, IRR greater than the discount rate, is telling you to accept it. Uh, what's happening? What's going on? Well, this is a situation in which you have a project with unconventional cash flows. In a previous video, we have talked about what we mean by conventional cash flows. This is a project with conventional cash flows where you have one cash outflow followed by inflows. Here, you have a cash inflow happening first and then an outflow. So this is not a conventional cash flow. In fact, this is an example of a situation which looks less like an investment and more like borrowing. Think about it. You're getting some money up front and then you're spending money later. This is more like you taking a loan, getting some money up front and then making a payment. My point is this, here all of a sudden IRR takes a very different meaning. When we were talking about investments where you spend money first and then reap the rewards, IRR has a very uh, logical sort of uh, interpretation. It's the rate of return that you're making on your investment. But you're not investing here, right? You're financing. You are taking a loan. So here IRR is not the rate of return. Think of it as the actual rate at which you are borrowing funds. And if you think about it, it's like a situation where you're borrowing $100 today and making a $130 payment on that quote-unquote loan. If somebody asks you, what is the rate of interest that you're paying on this loan, you'd say 30%. Okay, so if you understand that interpretation, then... How do you compare this with your discount rate? Discount rate here then has a different interpretation as well. In this context, discount rate of 10% is basically the next best rate at which you could have borrowed. And so the question now is, should you borrow at 30% here or should you borrow at the next best rate, which is 10%? Obviously, you should borrow at 10%, right? And so my point is this, whenever you are encountered with a situation like this, where you're looking at a financing project, not an investment project, but a financing one with unconventional cash flows, here the decision rule reverses with respect to IRR. Here the right decision is to invest in a project if and only if the IRR is less than K. Because in this situation, IRR is the actual rate at which you're borrowing. K is the rate at which you can borrow elsewhere. It only makes sense to borrow if the actual rate at which you are borrowing is less than an alternative rate at which you can borrow. And so that explains why, in this case, the NPV is coming out to be less than zero. In other words, the financing does not make sense because the IRR, which is the actual rate at which we are borrowing, which is 30%, is more than the rate at which we could have borrowed elsewhere, which is 10%. So put differently, for financing prospects, NPV will come out to be greater than zero if and only if the IRR is less than K or less than the discount rate. In other words, financing will only make sense, i.e. it will only be positive NPV if the rate at which we are borrowing is less than the rate at which we could have borrowed elsewhere, which as you can see,
is different from the normal consistency that you see between NPV and IRR. Here, the consistency was in a different sense. When you were talking about investments, yes, it made sense to argue that uh, you know if the investment has a rate of return that is more than the discount rate, then and only then will the project will be positive NPV. But here, financing will only make sense. In other words, it will only be positive NPV if the IRR is less than the discount rate. And to, so to sum it all up, basically what we're saying is that, look, if you are looking to make a decision about a financing prospect and uh, for some reason you have to use the IRR to make a decision, you should only accept the financing decision if the IRR is less than K because that is what will in this case ensure that you are doing something which is positive NPV. When we were talking about standard investment projects, there you should have only invested in those projects which had an IRR of greater than K because that uh, ensured that you were doing something which was positive NPV. And so in financing prospects, therefore, this is what leads to the consistency between NPV and IRR. The reason why we say that this is a drawback of IRR, because as you can see, the decision rule with respect to IRR needs to be changed. For investment projects, we used to say, look, IRR should be greater than discount rate. For financing activities, we're saying, look, we need to reverse that. But notice NPV in that case, or in that sense, doesn't suffer from that drawback because NPV is always saying the same thing. Look, you should uh, accept the project if the NPV is greater than zero. You should reject the project if the NPV is less than zero. I don't care whether you're talking about an investment decision or a financing decision. That decision rule always remains the same. So it is in that sense that IRR has a drawback, which NPV does not.